Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I was just unpacking all of my Tamiya BF109s, as you can see here, and I also got in the mail today a white box. And many of you know what a white box is. A white box is a, we'll call it a prototype uh, preview kit from Tamiya. And it, what they haven't had the box out or anything made up yet. And inside this one is the new 40A scale kit. And I actually just pulled the instruction sheet out to show you guys. This is the new 140A scale British Crocodile tank. Now the crocodile tank is a, is a Churchill tank that is pulling behind it uh, a little thing, and I'll flash a picture of it on the on the screen down here. That's pulling a little tank behind it, and it's basically a flamethrower tank. So the little tank in the back was full of fuel. It has a pipeline that goes down through the the whole piece, and then underneath the tank in a armored little section on the bottom comes up inside the tank, and it replaces out where the machine gun is. There's a flamethrower basically. Now, to me, it gives you the option to do two different variants on it, the flamethrower version and then the regular Mark 7 uh, Churchill tank. I forgot it for a sec. But the regular Mark 7 Churchill tank. So you get a couple different options with it, but the tank, is, the little uh, trailer tank is really, really cool on this little vehicle. So Now, this kit was just announced at the Nuremberg Toy Show and uh, looks to be a really cool little vehicle. In fact, what's kind of, kind of interesting, this is actually a huge box for a 48 scale armor kit. In fact, the reason I have these out is because it's the exact same size box as this. So there's there's a decent amount of plastic inside this. So I've seen it. It looks like to be a really cool kit to build and I'm very excited about it. So let's get started on it. Build, I thought I'd take a, just a minute here and show you the different sprue layout. Now there's not a lot of sprues, in fact only five inside the kit, but they are fairly large, especially for a 48 scale vehicle. As we start off here, you notice right off that it's not a bathtub style hole, it's a flat panel that we need to drill two holes that I've already taken care of in there. But this is one thing I want to show you guys is how beautiful this is and how much easier this is going to go together. So here's your, your sides here with, with your springs, all that stuff attached, one side of the ins or the inside of the wheels, and it's just a matter of gluing one whole plate that's got the whole outer portion of your wheel basically almost snaps right into position right there and you have that whole side. Now I've glued up this one here already so you can see how much time and effort and it still looks really really good. Those springs look as good as if you had just you know put them in individually yourself. So it's just a matter of putting in our braces in here and then gluing on the sides of the sponsons and we'll have a whole little bathtub style hull. So I will go ahead and do that and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, we've got the uh, the sides glued on, and also you'll notice that we've glued in two big pieces of metal that are included with the kit, and that's to give it a little bit of weight so it doesn't feel so light. It's more than doubles the, uh, the, the weight of the entire vehicle. Now, with those pieces glued in, I would also recommend that you take a little super glue and glue the metal in as well as just putting the two braces in. That way it doesn't bounce around inside your kit. And with that, we can go ahead. There's this center spine piece that'll get glued into place right here. And with that, we can go ahead and start gluing the other parts on. So once you make a decision, I'm doing the one with the trailer on it, you can go ahead and start gluing some of these parts on, which we're gonna take care of right now, as well as we can also put the drive sprocket and return idler on it. And they both have poly caps inside, so it'll just pop into place and that way we can get the tracks to wrap around it as well. Now it's time to put the uh, the tracks into place here and as you saw when we looked at the sprues when we first turned the video on that we had link and link tracks and we have some longer pieces as well as a bunch of individual pieces that will wrap around with this will be the actual uh, idler wheel on the vehicle. We have the drive sprocket back here and as you can see I was kind of doing a little test. I took five of the tracks as they were needed to be and we glued them into place around the, uh, around the idler and that'll just slide right into place. 
Now, these little plates that we glued on have the pins, and with those pins there are little holes, and that is going to basically be like a register mark to line up the track to get it going into the right position. You do want to make sure also, well, actually this helps a lot, making sure the track go the right direction. So with those little pins, as long as you put those pins in first, your tracks are always going to be going the right direction, so you don't have them on backwards or anything. Now the next little thing I'm going to talk to you guys about might get a couple of you angry out there. Uh, me personally, I don't, I don't mind it because a lot of times I do this. If you notice the instructions on the kit, the tracks don't complete all the way across the top here. And honestly, it's not a big deal to me at all because if you look at the top of the plate, once you glue these parts on, you're never going to see most of the entire top run of the track. It's going to be completely hidden away inside the side sponsons here and it's one less thing you have to worry about building. There might be a couple that will be mad that they didn't complete the tracks all the way around but if you're not going to see them, my philosophy has been if you don't see it, I'm not usually going to build it. So so once we get all the tracks on right here, the only thing I might do, and I'm going to have to look a little forward as I get the tracks going, I might leave from here all the way down to here as a separate piece that we can glue on, paint, then glue on separately later. And I think it just make it a little bit easier with painting, especially with these tiny little wheels. We're gonna have to try it out though, and I'll let you know right after I get all the tracks built, if that's possible. I think it's going to be, I mean, the tracks are pretty basic and the way they go together, so I don't think it'll be a problem. So I'll put all this together, and I'll come back and let you know if we can do that as a separate piece. As you can see, we got the uh, the separate bottom piece to work as an individual piece on its own. And the easiest way to do it is just to glue the little round piece, or the little individual pieces on the front and back. This gets solid, so you won't have to worry about that. And this will just fall right into place. And you can adjust this section right here to mate up with it. I should also point out too, I used the tank flipped over as a form to, to make the tracks into the right position. And that's just a matter of gluing them all together and letting them set up for a little bit and then placing them over the wheels, kind of letting them form into place but not stick to the wheels at all. With that done, now we can go ahead and attach the upper part of the hull, which are just a couple of little pins inside there. That kind of just clicks into place there. And then we can put the sides of the sponson on. Actually, that's the wrong one. This is the one that goes on that side. And we'll glue those up and come back and work on the next step. Okay, this portion of the build is not called out yet in the instructions. But as I was looking at the rest of the vehicle, we were about to build the mechanism for the, like the tow hook that attaches to the trailer. And it has the little area that has the fuel line and all that other stuff going. So I thought it would be a good time now to uh, build up the trailer with the tank and just kind of briefly show you how it goes together. That way when we do the next portion we can actually just attach all of this together as one piece. So I'm just going to play a little classical music and you can just watch just for a couple seconds here as the trailer goes together. Okay, we've just finished up building the uh, the mechanism that attaches the tank trailer to the actual vehicle, and you can see it gets actually works if you uh, don't get any glue in that little pivot point. And then we will attach the hose mechanism that'll go right into the little channel down here and hook the whole thing together. So we'll glue all of that up in there in a second, and then we can attach the uh, the tank. This is one thing I'm going to hold off on putting on. Uh, this is part of the the mufflers exhaust system and this needs to be painted kind of like a rust color but then you need to put this panel over it which is going to make it a little bit tough to paint so we're going to paint these two pieces off of the vehicle this will of course be body color this will be kind of like a you know a rusted um, tarnish color and then we'll be able to just glue those on after we get everything else built and painted 
So I will go ahead and glue this portion on right here and then we can go ahead and attach up. And this last little portion will just pop right into place. It'll actually fit just like that and it'll snap in there and fits really well. So I have the, uh, the whole body here um, put together and I've just glued up the fenders or the front fenders I should say and we'll put we'll glue those into place and I'm not going to spend too much time showing you the uh, the production of the turret but I would like to just show you that the the nice cast detail that to me is included especially on a piece this small so this will go together pretty quickly there are poly caps inside here so the obviously the barrel can move once you glue this into place here so I will go ahead and glue all these parts up and get the turret in and we'll put that into place right now. Well, it was just that easy. The, uh, the kit is actually done with uh, the principal amount of construction. Now, obviously, you're going to see holes all over the place here, and that's for, like, the exhaust and the rest of the tools that we haven't put on yet because we're going to paint those separately. I think it'll just be a little bit easier. Uh, as the turret went together, everything went really smooth on that. Just be aware that if you're going to leave the hatches open, there are two rather uh, large noticeable push pin marks that you're going to want to sand off before you glue those into place. It makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this was just a, a wonderful kit to put together. I mean, it was it was nothing to it. This is definitely a weekend type kit that's going to build up really quick and easy. Uh, no fighting with you on it. It just goes together the way it's supposed to. And it builds up to, a, as you can see, a decent sized little vehicle. So now that we have it all up to this point right here, we're going to go ahead and start doing our painting. Now we're first going to do the entire model in black coat, in NATO black and followed up by going to do some of the panel areas highlighted with uh, just regular flat white. And then we're going to shoot the entire thing with XF61 dark green. And if we missed it on just right, I think it'll look really good and we'll be able to see a lot of the individual little panels. I just did that on the uh, big scale, 25th scale uh, Centurion, and I like the way it came out. And then we'll do some little bit of weathering and things like that on it. So let's go ahead and start painting. Okay, now we're going to spray the entire model with XF69 NATO Black. And this is for a couple reasons. First of all, it'll show us where we have any flaws, if we need to do any more sanding or repairs or anything on that. As well as also it'll act as our shadow coat. So we can go ahead and put the white over on top of it. Now before we do that, we're going to spray all of the tracks down with a light mist coat of our kind of a brownish tarnish color. It's not really rust, but it acts as a nice uh, nice base for it. We're also going to paint the uh, the muffler as well as all the spare tracks down with this just light mist coat over the black that we already put on the tracks. And now we can begin to do the highlight coat of the black and white and just lightly we want to just fill in some of the different panels. Just create some some variation in the paint. So when we go ahead and put the, the green color on, you'll see these light and dark spots show up on it. Finally, we're going to spray the model very lightly with XF61 dark green and, and in a circular pattern just lightly start to build up mist coats over the entire thing. And this is so we don't get rid of the black and white shadow coat that we just spent all the time putting on. And you just keep working back and forth until you see it's at the point that you prefer it at. If you have a lot of uh, contrast to it or not so much. So I've let the paint completely dry now for this color and we've sprayed the entire thing with dull coat as well as let that dry and then we went ahead and start putting the tools on, the extra track on the side, straps, all that kind of stuff. And now that we have it dull coated we can go ahead and start putting the decals on too. And we're just going to use a little bit of Mark Fit Strong as a base for it. And there's only about five decals on this particular version, but they obviously do show up on there, so we do want to put them on. We'll start off by putting the front and back on. And make sure that one a little bit better. We'll just get it all straight, put another coat on top of it there, and let it dry. And we'll put one more coat of dough coat over the entire thing once it's all dry. So now that we've 
dull coated it with a second time. We're going to take a little enamel thinner. And you've seen me do this before. We're just going to put a light coat on all over the top here. And then we're just going to use a little different streaking grime, some rust and things like that. We're just going to go over and start applying a thin coat down the whole line here. Letting it build up. And then as it starts to dry, we can start to pull away any excess. So it looks a little heavy right now, but rest assured we will take the majority of it off and just leave a small, small amount. Then all the little nooks and crannies on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the whole vehicle and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. How you doing there? And we're also going to do the exact same technique on the sides here too, streaking it down. Putting it on a little heavy at first, but then we'll take our uh, enamel thinner and take off the excess. Okay, we're going ahead and we're doing the same weathering technique with the streaking grime and rust, things like that, all over the uh, the trailer. But what I thought I would do is take a moment and show you what we're going to do with the wheels on this. And we're first going to put a little thin coat of enamel thinner. And then using our light sienna, we're going to go over the entire tread part of the wheel and pack this stuff right into all that tread. Now it's going to obviously look wet and not the way we want it to right away because we have to let it dry. So we're going to let this dry for about 10 minutes and then I will come back and show you what it looks like and how we're going to take care of the next step. So we let this dry now and now it's just a matter of going over and knocking off the excess here. And you can see why we put it on heavy earlier just to leave behind and you can get even a little bit up on the sides here give it a little bit of a dusty dirty effect and the last little thing we're going to do now is we're just going to take a little bit of to me as black panel liner and just go over some of these areas in here like the springs the inside of this and this is all just to make all this little tiny detail pop out kind of got to work kind of lightly and it's obviously it's a little bit darker right now because it hasn't dried yet but it will dry flat and it really just helps bring out all of this detail especially inside on these springs and anywhere else like you have like the little uh, latches and things like this or little bolts just putting the tiniest little amount on it So we'll go over and do that and then we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it dries. Here we are, here's our completed model. And as you can see, it's actually a very long model. In fact, it was so long it wouldn't fit on the turntable properly. So we're going to just use some individual video clips to uh, show you the final, final fit and finish of the vehicle. Now this is, like I was telling you earlier, a prototype kit. So the actual kit is due out sometime in late April, early May from what we've been told. In fact, that's why we don't have box art yet on it. Uh, the kit went together exactly the way you would expect. It was a very, very nice kit. In fact, this is something that a, a modeler, even, even a beginner, could actually do in a weekend's time. Uh, just a couple hours of build time and then the rest is detailing and painting. In fact, this kit would make a great, great, uh, we'll call it like a palette cleanser. If anyone is out there has just been building a ridiculously crazy model kit with, you know, a thousand plus parts or anything like this, building a Tamiya kit of this quality really, really uh, renews your energy in wanting to build model kits again because it just goes together so well. So if you're a collector of 40A scale armor or just someone looking for a, a great kit to put together, uh, I would definitely recommend picking up uh, this particular kit. So I want to thank you guys for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.